Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. You know how sometimes you just accidentally stumble across something that works really good? So every now and then I like uh, liver and uh, I'll get it at a restaurant every once in a while. I don't like it all the time. Just every now and then you just get kind of get a taste for, you know, for liver. It's hard to find somebody that cooks it good. Um, I've, I've only ever had it twice. Today was one of those times. Um, and one other time I was at a restaurant that used to be here in Seguin. Um, but uh, most people cook it too long and too tough. Tastes too much like liver. Um, you know, they don't season it properly. People never really pay much attention to it. Everybody gets away, they like it, and that's what they're used to. Well, today we accidentally discovered a, a really good way to do it because my wife bought uh, packs of liver, you know, for like two bucks a piece and cook it and then cut it up and then put it in one of those little mini blenders with a little bit of water and make a paste out of it and put it on the dog's food. It gives them extra nutrients, uh, adds a little more to it. You know, we got this expensive dog food that they won't hardly eat by itself. So we dress it up a little bit with this because it's cheap and it's good for them. She's cooking this and she does just light, just sear it basically in a dry skillet. Maybe with just a touch of oil. The most tender liver you've ever had. And buttery in the inside. And so I put a little bit of a little bit of butter, a little salt, pepper, some gar garlic powder, and some smoked paprika, and stirred that up and put it over the top of it. I tell you what, just by accident, just playing around, just by accident, discovered an incredible recipe. So the neighbor came over. She likes liver. She ate two big old pieces of it, dipping it in that butter and stuff. Amazing. Accidentally discover something great. We're still working on the sauce. We're trying to come up with a sauce to put on there to use from the leavens in the pan or make a gravy to put on there. Um, but uh, if you guys want in the future, if you have somebody in your family that likes liver and onions or likes liver, uh, I'll share it as a recipe when we get that sauce perfected. But the cooking method we got down pat, it's it's good. Even just like plain like it is with no seasoning, the way she cooked it, it, it was excellent. You can cut it with a fork. So if anybody wants to wants that recipe, I'll do that in the future. Okay, um, jump back off of our side side quest there. Uh, Acts ten thirty eight is our target verse. Who went about doing good? And this is about Jesus. The whole verse says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. You know how many people today. And back in 2019 to 2020, this was really bad. How many people today say, oh, I, I, I want to go do good stuff for others, and they immediately condemn you and attack you. It still happens today. You go on a, on, on a video and you comment something about that, oh, works-based salvation, you know. No, you can have be saved aside from doing good works. The Lord told us to do good works, and the Lord did good works. This verse literally says it right here. We were saved unto good works. We're supposed to go do good for others. Why they get so upset about that, I have no idea. I still to this day cannot get my head wrapped around that. Why, when it says that we are to go do good works, and they get a problem with it. Oh, it's works based salvation. He's a heretic. So you're not doing anything good for anybody? Is that what you're saying? That's what it sounds like. Well, no, I'm not saying that. But that's exactly what you're saying. My salvation is separate from my works. My salvation came first, my good works came after. And my good works aren't for my salvation. My good works are for the Lord and for the blessing of those that I'm doing them to. So when we find a verse like this, where it says, who went about doing good, it leads me right back to the verse that says, be a doer of the word. The word says, do good, do good. It's real simple. But you know, a lot of people won't. I've been on the receiving end of a lot of that negativity. So let's go up here. Gentiles hear the good news. All right, we'll start here in verse 34. Gentiles hear the good news. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. He doesn't choose one over the other. He has no partiality to anybody. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know. 
which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all people. Jesus didn't appear to everybody when he, when he rose from the dead. Big misconception. A lot of people say that. He didn't. Not to all people, but to witnesses chosen before by God. The Lord chose who was going to actually see him. And it wasn't none of us. Even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Not everybody got to see him, and that was by design. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witnessed that through his name. All the prophets, Old Testament, through his name, Jesus' name. Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. So there's a lot here. Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets of old. Some people say Jesus isn't in the Old Testament. Well, here Peter says, all the prophets witnessed that through the name of Christ. Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Amazing. It's right there in the text. You believe, you got it. Done. That's what the Bible says. That's what I believe. Yet there are people today who would disagree with that. Well, good luck. Then you're disagreeing with the Bible. Now, I love, and I'm gonna. this isn't part of our context, but I'm going to read the next couple of verses because I love what happens because of this speech. The Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles. Verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, he was in the middle of his speech. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter said, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. I love this chapter in Acts. It's an amazing chapter. Few words, but yet an exquisite miniature of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are not many touches, but they are the strokes of a master's pencil. Of the Savior, and only of the Savior, is it true in the fullest, broadest, and most unqualified sense. He went about doing good. From this description, it is evident that he did good personally. So we're going to learn a lesson here about this. And if there's people out there that disagree about the doing the good things, they disagree and they're listening. I challenge them to listen to the end. The evangelists constantly tell us that he touched the leper with his own finger, that he anointed the eyes of the blind, and that in cases where he was asked to speak the word only at a distance, he did not usually comply, but went himself to the sick bed and there personally wrought the cure. A lesson to us, if we would do good, to do it ourselves. You know, it's one thing to give. It's one thing to, to give uh, and then, you know, bless it, Lord, I bless this gift that it be used for your will and to the greater blessing of anyone that receives it. It's another thing to go and do it yourself. Give alms with your own hand. A kind look or word will enhance the value of the gift. Speak to a friend about his soul. Your loving appeal will have more influence than a whole library of tracts. Your testimony and the gospel our great evangelism tool. Our Lord's mode of doing good sets forth his incessant activity. He did not only the good which came close to hand, but he went about on his errands of mercy. Throughout the whole land of Judea, there was scarcely a village or a hamlet which was not gladdened by the sight of him. How this reproves the creeping, loitering manner in which many professors serve the Lord. Let us gird up the loins of our mind and not be and be not weary in well-doing. Does not the text imply that Jesus Christ went out of his way to do good? 
So all these people that don't want anything to do with doing good works, they got a problem. Jesus went out of his way to do it, setting us an example. He went about doing good. He was never deterred by danger or difficulty. He sought out the objects of his gracious intentions. So must we, if old plans will not answer. We must try new ones, for fresh experiments sometimes achieve more than regular methods. That's funny because that's what we did earlier with the liver. <laughs> fresh experiments sometimes achieve more than regular methods. Christ's perseverance and the unity of his purpose are also hinted at, and the practical application of the subject may be summed up in the words, he has left us an example that we should follow in his steps. What the Lord did is what we should strive to do. Jesus said, strive to enter by the narrow gate. A lot of people say, oh, if you say if you have to strive, you're, you're preaching works. Yes, I am, but not for salvation. Because of salvation. You don't do these things for salvation. You do it because you're saved. Because you're saved and you belong to the Lord, and this is what he left us to do. Here's my example. Follow it. Be a doer of the word. Do good to others. It's, it's literally the purpose of us still being here is to do good to others. Now, that could be giving money. That could be buying somebody groceries. That could be paying somebody's rent. That could be fixing somebody's car. That could be taking somebody to a doctor's appointment that can't get a ride. Uh, that could be going back and sharing the truth with them even after they, you've had a very negative reaction. Like we did with the liver today. We never thought to cook it like that. Changed it, changed it up and did something different and ended up with a great result. Sometimes we may need to do that with those people we've talked to and won't hear us anymore. Change up the result. Change up the, 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 the purpose and the way. See if we can get a different result. We'll never know until we get there. But the one thing that I'm going to make sure that I don't do is I'm not going to just sit back and say, well, that didn't work before. I'm not going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. Matter of fact, I'm going to try it and I'm going to do it a little different. I'm not going to sit back and not do anything because the rest of the world says, oh, you better not be doing any works or you're, you're going to be accused of being a works-based uh, salvationist. What does doing good works have to do with it? salvation? Nothing. Except that they are a result of your salvation. See, I did good things before I was saved. There's no value to them. After I'm saved, the good works that I do are for the Lord because he has put those in my path. And so then they have fruit, then they have value, then they are for something. So do I stop doing good works after I'm saved or do I do more? I do more. The rest of these weirdos, all the stuff they're coming up with, they're not getting it from the Bible. That's for sure because the Bible says contrary to what they say. They're getting it from other people. But we are told to go out and do good to others in any way that we can. Do you know how much good it is if you take the time? Well, for instance, when COVID was going on and our neighbors were, were all sick, we, we told them, don't worry about it. We'll cook dinners for you and we'll bring it over. And we met them at the fence and then, here you go, here's dinner. We cooked it for a, a few nights. And it helped them out because they were all sick and nobody could do it. So they had good good food to keep them going. Little things like that. You, you won't be amazed at how much of a difference it makes in someone's life when you, instead of seeing what you can get out of the deal, seeing what you can give and add to the deal. That was in my prayers for that little tractor I have that has been an incredible tool. And then, and then this thing with the truck, and I had asked the Lord about both of them. And I said, Lord, I only want this if it, under the condition that it can be used as a benefit to others, it can be used to help others in some way. Because I want to be able to do good with this, these tools and do good and, and it be a benefit and a blessing to others. And he has done that multiple, multiple times. Amazing. Amazing. Sometimes I don't think we realize the good that we do and the impact that it really has. Or we don't realize the times where we deny doing good. The times where we, well, I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to be, you know, Mr. Goody Two Shoes, or I don't want anybody to think that I'm I'm trying to step on someone's toes. I tell you what, I got tired of, of people getting offended. 
and mad. Oh, look, you're trying to show everybody up. No, I'm just doing what I'm, I know I should do. If you're offended by it, that's your problem. I got to where I just don't care anymore what they think. If I see a need, I go fill it. And if I get in somebody else's way, oh, you want to go first? Well, and, and this happened to me. I saw a need. I paused. I waited. Nobody said nothing, so I jumped in. Then I got got read the riot act afterwards when nobody else was paying attention. I was like, oh, I'll step back and you can go do it. Well, no, I'm not interested in doing it. What are you complaining for? It's getting done. Don't worry about it. How about you be, you be a part of it and, and help with some supplies? And then you can say you were a part of the thing so you can take some of the glory. I don't want the glory. I'm just trying to do what needs to be done so it's a benefit to everybody. I'm not here to get attention. I'm not here to take some of the, the, the glory from this. You have all of it. In fact, you can tell them that it was your idea. I don't care. I even did that in the Army. I tell my sergeants, look, I'm not looking for any attention or glory. You tell them you did it. You tell them this was your idea. I'm just going to go get it done because I'm tired of watching it not get done. I'm tired of watching everybody getting in trouble or, or struggling because it's a simple fix. when We could just go and do it and it's finished. Problem solved. I've always been that way. And it's gotten me in so much trouble in this life. But you know what? That's what the Lord wants. He's looking for people who are willing to push their way through and say, okay, I'm here to, to help in any way I can. What do you need? He's looking for people who would unselfishly give of themselves with no doubt or question or hesitation. He's looking for people who are willing to do what needs to be done at any point in time. Whether you're able or not is irrelevant. Whether you have the funds or not or anything is irrelevant. The fact that you're willing, because if you're willing, he can work with that. If you're not willing, he can't work with it. He'll give you all the means in the world, but if you're not willing, you're never going to do anything with it. But if you're willing, he will give you everything you need to be able to do what needs to be done. And that thing will be the great, have the greatest impact and will be the thing remembered the most. Sometimes you may go your whole life, and this is for a particular person that I hope is listening right now. Sometimes you may go, you know, you may be doing something that, that even if it's later in your life, you may be doing something for the Lord and, and you love it and you're happy for it, but you don't quite get credit. You don't quite hear people give you, you know, say, hey, thank you so much for being here. I, I, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have the encouragement that I have. I, I wouldn't have heard the whole gospel. You know, you, you really helped me and encouraged. Just because you don't hear that doesn't mean that what you're doing isn't an incredibly positive effect on the person or the people that you're doing it for. I said, there's one person listening. I hope he's listening and, and he hears this. It, it's sometimes we do things that are very thankless jobs, but you know what? Just because nobody pays attention or acknowledges it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that your job isn't one of the most important. It doesn't mean that the little thing that you do isn't the most important thing. There's a lot of times the more important stuff gets done by people in the background that nobody pays attention to or hears about. They won't remember your name, but I want you to remember this. And this is for every one of us. I want you to remember this. In the Bible, it states, I've read this, these verses recently. In the Bible, it states that there are people who dwell on this earth that live in caves and are dressed in sackcloth, that the earth is not worthy to bear. These are people that nobody knows about. These are people that nobody ever meets or knows or recognizes or sees. They don't know their name. They're never acknowledged but they do some of the most important work, holy work for the Lord. And when they stand in glory, that's when they will fully be recognized. That's when the Lord will make them shine brighter than anybody. So if you're not getting any accolades or attention or people don't know that you're the one doing it, stay silent. Don't try to get people to catch it. Don't try to, well, uh, yeah, just let it go. Don't worry about it because in the end, the Lord is going to shower you with glory because of those things. Be happy and content that nobody pays attention. Listen, a lot of times it's better when nobody knows that you're the one doing those good things. Sometimes just do it and don't worry about it. Forget about it. And walk away. And let it go. Because it'll actually be better for you on the tail end than it will in this life. This is where a true love of what we do comes from. This is where uh, a, a, a true desire uh, and some of the greater sacrifices happen when we do it not looking for any expectation of anything, not looking to get anybody to acknowledge us. And sometimes we won't even get encouraged or anything. I mean, nobody will really pay much attention to us. We're just passing through a voice or a face that passes through. But God's keeping a full record of everything. 
And so this is an encouragement for all of you, everyone listening. If you feel like you're kind of getting ignored of you, good, good. Let it stay that way. Because the reward waiting for you because of that on the other side is greater than you can possibly comprehend. Go do good. Go about doing good and do it for the love of doing good. Do it for the love of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do it for the love of your brethren that you're helping. Those are your brothers and sisters. Those are all, all those people that you're helping are made in the image of God. Do it for the love of them. Don't do it for recognition or accolades. In fact, if, the, if anywhere you can, push those things away. Not me, guys. It's not me. This is all the Lord. The credit goes to him. But wait until you stand in heaven and see what he really does. Because he's going to bring all that out and say, look. Look at all this. See, if they had books writing down all the things we were doing, some people are going to have a book that's going to look like a little paperback with just a few pages. Here's your book. Some people are going to have volumes, giant you ever seen them big giant Bibles they had? I think a couple people got them in some museums. It takes like three people to pick it up. You have stacks of books like that. All the things that you've done that nobody ever knew about. The Lord keeps record of all that. So if he told us to go about doing good, let's go do good. Don't worry about who knows. Don't worry about who sees. Just go do it. Do it. Don't worry about it. Do it and don't worry about whether or not you're going to get any attention for it. That's what Jesus did. He tried to make it so people didn't give him the glory, didn't give him attention. He tell people, hey, Lord, you did this for me. Thank you. Don't tell nobody. That's between you, me and you. Don't tell nobody. Just go do the good for the sake of doing the good. Do the good for the honor and glory of our Lord. Do the good for the, the honor of his name. Do the good because you have the ability to do it and the willingness and desire to do it. And wait until you stand before him. And when everything you've done passes through the Bema seat, the largest majority of it withstands the fire. That'll be a glorious entry into heaven. If you're doing good, keep doing it. Hold on for dear life. Stay faithful, full trust and, and, and hope in Jesus Christ. And wait until he comes. Because then you will see the true fruit of all of your actions, the true fruit of everything that you're doing for him. And, and while we're waiting, live every day to glorify him as best you can. You're not going to do it perfect, neither do, neither do I, but we do the best we can. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.